Rebecca is a holistic practitioner in UK whose focus is on optimizing birth and the first six years of life for the long-term well-being of the baby. To this end, she facilitates emotional healing, mindfulness, belief and behavior change, community and connection for greater harmony during birth and beyond. She leads regular harmony singing circles and specializes in harnessing mindset and healing birth trauma for an empowered subsequent birth. Since 2016, she has delved deeply into the adverse biological effects of electromagnetic radiation, EMR, emitted from mobile, wireless, and electric devices, having experienced some herself. With little ones most at risk, it is an inconvenient truth which she feels compelled to share in order to safeguard future generations, both born and unborn. She welcomes an opportunity to support midwives in taking forward this conversation while keeping their spirit high. Rebecca trains in matrix bath with emotional freedom techniques, in transformational coaching with NLP, in yoga, in the ultimate nap, in the singing mama's choir facilitation amongst other areas welcome rebecca you can now take away the presentation thank you so much Catherine, and thank you so much to everybody who's joining today and taking your precious time out for uh what i believe is a really urgent topic to start talking about um so i yeah, as, as Catherine said, uh, after experiencing some adverse effects myself, predominantly I think from my smartphone, um, moving out of London to the country and, and then and suffering from tinnitus and various things, um, I started to delve into this topic uh, and have been down a rabbit hole for the last two and a half years. Um, and with, you don't know what you don't know, but once you do know it, you can't unknow it. And it comes with a certain responsibility that I feel compelled to share. So uh, when the this year started, I thought, how can I make the biggest difference with what, I, what I've learned? And I, it came straight away, it's to talk to you, to midwives, because you, um, you are so brilliantly positioned to, to share this information and to make a really positive difference for a whole lifetime for that child by uh, your your um, seeing pregnant women as early as is possible in their pregnancy so i set a goal and it's just kind of manifested to this <laughs> i apologize in advance if i ruin your day because it's not an easy topic to talk about without getting into overwhelm and feeling like you know a bit powerless about it but i do want to end with some really practical tips on and how you can drastically reduce your exposure um, up to 90 percent with the with what you have around you regardless of of what is in the environment so it's no mistake that this um some clever people have come and called it the smart revolution because what's the opposite of smart anyone stupid <laughs> dumb if you're dumb you can't communicate so it's a really clever clever thing that we've all embraced i want to look today at how and why to reduce the exposures to radiation from mobile wireless devices especially during pregnancy and early child development um so we'll, we'll put this in context a little bit looking at um the the well safety in inverted commas the exposure guidelines why specifically prenatal and early exposure is of such concern. The extent of the problem with all, all the many, the proliferation of devices that we are embracing today and measures to reduce exposure. And then I'd really like um, to open it up to a conversation um, on, on how you could take this information forward in your life and your practice. Um, so without further ado, we're living through an electronic technological revolution, the pace of which is unprecedented. And we have a love affair with mobile phones, computers, smart technology. It's fun, it's convenient, and it's addictive. 
we all have these devices, even our children, and um, even they have become increasingly dependent on them, but at what cost? And I, there's a study showing low economic um, families in America where 75% uh, of four-year-olds had their own phone. Uh, and the one-year-olds, I think it was something like 97% uh, used a phone um, either with or without assistance at one. So this is a massive problem. Um, that's on a daily basis, by the way. So people are beginning to voice concerns around the time that children spend on screens. Um, and the, the conversations I hear are about the behavioural privacy and safeguarding issues that arise from that. And parents, I think, are feeling increasingly conflicted when navigating children and screen time. It's some, a problem that, you know, as I grew up, none of this existed. My, so my parents did not have to navigate that territory as a parent. So those conversations are being had, but few people are discussing or even aware of the adverse biological effects from the radiation emitted by all these devices. But the electromagnetic fields, abbreviated to EMFs, and radio frequencies, abbreviated to RFs, which are microwaves on which they all function. And nobody's having this conversation. So you, you might rightly assume that mobiles, cordless phones, cell towers, Wi-Fi, smart everything, they're proliferating, that's a given, that they must be safe. They, they must have been tested rigorously, or well, this wouldn't be wouldn't have happened. So we don't need to, you know, question it. We it would be right to think that our authorities must be looking out for us if this is happening. However, exposure guidelines have been determined by these organisations who represent and oversee the telecommunications and electronics industry themselves. So they have vested interests in us getting addicted to and buying these, these gadgets. And with guidelines set with not one person who has any understanding of the biology involved, the electron, electronic engineers and so on. As our mobile phones have doubled in power, uh, since the guidelines were set and Wi-Fi and mobile coverage extended globally, guidelines still date back to the 1990s. So this letter, and I know it's hard to see on my screen, but I'm going to try to read out the relevant bits. This letter is from the Environmental Protection Agency in 2002, responding to a query about the um, exposure levels. And it says that they were adopted by the FCC, that's the Federal Com Communications Commission, in 1996. The guidelines are recommended by the EPA with certain reservations in 1993. So here we are in 2019, almost to check myself on that. And we are still reliant on information that was determined in 1993. Um, they, they were designed to protect against injury caused by acute exposure that result in tissue heating, so that's the heating up of your body, or electric shock and burn they are only thermally based and they do not apply to chronic non-thermal exposure situations, which is what we're basically exposed to today. The generalization by many that the guidelines protect human beings from harm by any or all mechanisms is not justified. So let's look at how the phones were tested. And when I'm talking about phones, this is still the radio frequencies that the wireless routers um, emit and mobile self towers and everything else. So um, this is what it's based on. Uh, this is Meet Sam. Sam uh, is a, a plastic model of a head filled with some liquid and um, he's 90% bigger than most users. He's based on um, the top 10% of military guys in 1989. Uh, the 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 tests were done measuring only the specific absorption rate, so how these radio frequency, the microwaves, were, are absorbed into this uh, fake head. They were looking at the heating effect only, the heating up of tissues, by one kilogram, by one degree, get this, for six minutes. And the phones were at a distance, not touching the body. If you go into the settings in your, in your phones, very deep, you will find that every single phone um, will recommend that it would be at least 5 to 25 millimetre distance from your body that you're supposed to handle the device. Why they're bringing up wireless headphones, I really don't know. But anyway, and they were tested for a single source only. 
one exposure. Um, this is what they're based on. They don't account for normal thermal, non-thermal effects, sorry, and thousands of peer-reviewed published studies uh, are indicating biological changes and have done long before phones, even the mobiles even came out. They don't look at body contact exposure. They don't look at peak exposures. So, so these were averaged to bring the readings down. So what you have is peaks and troughs of very, um, very uh, high intensities and uh, fast rates and they are averaging those exposures but the, from the biological perspective those peaks uh, are what is bombarding the cells they are relevant they matter um they didn't look at chronic or long-term exposure which is uh, basically you know it's not well they weren't relevant at all to how we're using our devices and, and how we're layering them up with the cumulative effects and the multiple sources all day and night um the only Thing that they looked at there were the guidelines for 30 minutes exposures. They certainly don't take into account the small head size of children and the unborn child with the SAR rates being so much smaller than SAM. Um, and they didn't look at the electrical properties and the different densities of tissues in the brain that would affect absorption. And it's been shown that in live brains, um, the rising brain tumours that we're getting, uh, that you can get hot spots. So the, if you are to look at the SAR rating, the specific absorption rate, for a 10-year-old, it's been sh shown that um, it's 153% higher than the SAM model. And children can absorb twice the amount of microwave radiation into their brain than adults can, and 10 times the amount into the bone marrow of their skull, bone marrow being where all our red blood cells are made. Surprisingly, you might be surprised by this, um, that most phones will exceed even the IC and IRP and FCC standards. Um, the European standards, which is what the WHO want us all to adopt, their <laughs> lovely language, to harmonise international standards, um, it's actually, you can see, uh, 11, it will be 11 times, so they're, they're a lot lower than the FCC standards. Okay, so... The proliferation of mobile masks or cell towers is undisputed, it's a given, right? So with different frequency bandwidths used for each new generation of mobile to technology, each time we bring out new generation, we're just adding on. So our radio frequency environmental exposure has increased massively over the last 25 years, which is frankly nothing in the context of human evolution, is it? So let's have a look. This is um, the... Uh, 2G back in 1996, 25 years ago, worldwide perspective, 10 years later, 3G, 10 years later, 4G in 2016. And now compared to 210,000 antenna or more, then um, we're now looking with 5G that they will be putting um, for over 13 million in the US alone, it will be 17 million globally and more um, by 2025. Who knows what that will look like? That will also involve many satellites in space. Um, this is the guy who chaired the FCC at the time that the first um, the first phone studies were done when when uh, lawsuits started happening in in the 90s. Um, he buried the evidence discredited the scientist who I've met, and this is him announcing the press conference about 5G. It's a video. His words are interesting. <laughs> um, so he confirms that for 5G there has been no testing, no standards, anything goes. His words, if anyone tells you what 5G is really about, run the other way. He's interested in raising billions of dollars and it will require a massive deployment of towers. So personally I don't find him somebody who I would want to trust with my children's health. In the same 25 years, we've seen a massive rise in chronic conditions and multiple chronic conditions. I'm not going to read them all, but there they are, including infertility and miscarriage. Uh, yeah, and um, so one in three adults worldwide with a chronic condition. Nearly half the population in, in America, children have a chronic health condition which would rise to over half if you can overweight obesity or being at risk of developmental disease, which is massively linked to this topic. So some conditions associated with electromagnetic radiation. 
I wonder, just pop in the chat if you want um, <laughs> to see if somebody's burnt the dinner. Um, uh, yeah, does anybody recognise any of these? I've certainly experienced some of them. And quite alarming with the uh, DNA damage. I'd also be really curious to uh, ask midwives what your observational experience is of um, any, any increase in birth defects. I haven't delved into that specifically. It would be a really interesting line of inquiry. So just to pick out autism just as one, um, to see the, the uh, exponential increase here. This is from 1975 to 2009. And... Um, it ends in one in 110 in America. Um, it's currently one in 50 and, and rising. And if you can compare that with the exponential increase in the wireless proliferation in America, you can see how clearly it correlates. So uh, we've got autism, the fastest growing disability in the US, fivefold increase in the 90s, which is when the mobile technology um, uh, really took off in the UK. Uh, yeah. Dr. Klinkhart is a really pioneer of his field in, with regards to treating chronic illness and, um, and acknowledging the connection between electromagnetic radiation and, and these diseases. So uh, he points out that the, these were not in the doctor's education when he qualified in 1972. These, these uh, chronic things didn't exist then but it's what most doctors are having to deal with now. And um, I strongly recommend if I just go back, if you do have good internet to, to look up this video, it's a really good interview, The Health Crisis of Our Time on YouTube. Because he, uh, he basically correlate, he can predict the rate of autism dependent on what exposure levels were found in the bedroom of the mother when she was pregnant, which is quite interesting. So, um, although correlation doesn't equate to cause, thousands of studies by those that have studied the effects of electromagnetic radiation on biology show adverse effects at the non-thermal levels. This um, uh, IARC eventually uh, acknowledged that the extremely low frequency uh, and radio frequency radiation possible human carcinogens and uh, those that were many that were present at that decision making actually now say that it should be a group one carcinogenic human to like smoking and asbestos when they looked at all this research the same research that was presented so an alarming statistic on brain cancers in in children if yeah if that were my child uh, I would not be I would be wanting better standards, let's put it that way. So thousands of peer-reviewed studies show uh, a host of effects. Let's have a look at them. So this is a report that was published in 1971 and um, republished in 1972. The Naval Medical Research Institute putting together 2,300 studies of military testing. Um, to Because basically the radio frequency, so microwave radiation was developed in, in the Cold War for, as a stealth weapon in microwave warfare. So this is the, the history of it all. Um, and obviously the military are interested in testing and repeat replicable things. So I'm just going to whiz through this, but pick out some things because it's, it's quite long. So we have um, altered sensitivity to drug stimuli, altered sex ratio of births, decreased fertility going to sterility, we'll touch on that a bit later, altered menstrual activity, I know that children, you know, girls are getting their periods from earlier and earlier, altered fetal development, decreased lactation in nursing mothers, um, what else have we got? <laughs> Dehydration um, in even death. Central nervous systems, headaches. This is from the uh, lack of oxygen because of the red blood cells clumping together. Insomnia, restlessness, cranial nerve disorders, seizures and convulsions relevant to the increase in epilepsy we're seeing. Um, neurovegetative disorders, fatigue, 
synapses of the vagus nerve being being um, disturbed um, effects on locomotor nerves so, so we have uh, the increase in Parkinson's and MS going on impotence anxiety lack of concentration dizziness pollution hallucination, sleepiness, insomnia, irritability, decreased appetite if you're particularly close to a mobile mask, this can happen, loss of memory, tremors of the hands, I've experienced that. This is not something that you want with Wi-Fi in schools, is it? It's not exactly helpful to learning. Blood disorders affecting white and, blood, uh, white and red blood cells and bone marrow, um, cholesterol, even stroke. Changes and all sorts of things here. Okay, there are links to um, diabetes with increased uh, blood sugars, the loss of appetite again with anorexia, digestive problems, we're seeing a massive rise in IBS, and so on. Genetic and chromosomal changes, so this is uh, pertinent to, to midwives' understanding. Chromosome aber aberrations, mutations, mongolism. Uh, and interestingly, when we think of all that's going on currently with the climate change, um, oh, Sarah, I'm sorry, I will try and get to, to the things that we can do to mitigate this. I just need to demonstrate the, the harm first. But we, orientation of animals, birds, fish, um, this has an impact on the climate too. Okay, if you have fillings, the convenience of barking, all sorts of things here, and changes in circadian rhythm is important. So basically, those setting the standards have argued that um, uh, that they can't. There are inconsistencies in in the research for the non non thermal levels because of all these wide ranges. But if you understand that we are human beings that react differently, we're electrical beings, our cells have electricity as strong as lightning bulbs in them. Um, Dr. Martin Paul's grand working work in 2013 showed that um, even at extremely low levels of non-thermal microwave frequencies, um, they can activate the cell's voltage-gated calcium channels, which is basically affecting the calcium flow into the, the cell on, um, with eight, these eight pathophysiological effects, leading to neurological damage, hormone disruption, oxidative stress, which is um, a precursor to cancer, DNA breaks, and germline mutations, apoptosis, infertility, cancer. So um, this is a sum up from his, uh, and the notes I've taken from his presentation, lowered fertility um, being one of the uh, alarming things here and um, just pick out that sperm counts in technologically advanced countries have, have dropped by more technological than half. advanced country technologically advanced countries um, and reproduction has dropped well below replacement levels in all of them except for one uh, we need to start talking about this and having conversations Neurological effects, as we've already looked at, he confirms those cellular DNA damage, single and double DNA breaks, uh, cell death, oxidative stress, endocrine hormonal disruptions. He uh, he will say that this this intracellular calcium is the pre is what's causing everything else. It explains why such diversity, and this is a real biggie. That we need to be looking at for increased antibiotic resistance. Strong evidence to show cardiac effects. Early onset Alzheimer's and other dementias. There's um, type three Alzheimer's is now. Um, this is this is found in early in younger and younger people and even digital dementia in teenagers mm. from environmental exposure. Not only, mm. not only. Um, not only electromagnetic radiation, but that is a, one of them, also chemical explosions and so on. And ADM, ADHD and autism from le late prenatal and early postnatal exposures. So let's look at those, because that's what you're here for. So why are children more susceptible? Basically, they're still developing brain, body, central nervous system. They're still, cells are dividing and differentiating faster than adults. There are critical, vulnerable period windows of, of development that can have 
being profoundly affected by environmental exposures. The myelin sheath that protects their nerves is not yet fully developed. It's shown that if myelin is damaged, these impulses slow down. Um, and uh, I, I certainly see this in some young people. It's almost like they haven't been to bed for two days with the thought processes that are just going so slowly. And it can lead to things like MS. Uh, as we've already said, that they're so much smaller than the SAM model, and so penetration can be can be this much deeper. This is it's a it's a simulated model, but it shows that the radiation in a five year old, never mind a baby, with a mobile phone to the ear, can penetrate almost all the whole head. They have a greater water content in their tissues. Uh, bone density and bone marrow is particularly affected. Immune system, if they're immature already, and the, this radiation decreases their red and white blood cells and the oxidized platelets. Um, the electromagnetic radiation also targets um, the blood brain barrier and the, and the intestinal lining, creating, making it less, perm sorry, more permeable, um, which is uh, why. With the intestine, you get you can get IBS, and uh, that links to allergies because food stuffs are getting into the system. With the blood-brain barrier, you've got obviously leakage of chemicals and heavy metals and things going into the brain that really shouldn't. That links in with the Alzheimer's and dementia that's going on. And their stem cells are uh, differentiating by in their very nature, so they're undifferentiated. I mean. Um, higher density is more active so and they have been shown to be especially susceptible but this should be um, what we should be looking at in terms of the cancer research that the levels that um, apply to stem cells and as we've said they are the first generation or you know ongoing generations that are going to be exposed from conception to grave or even preconception if you look at the quality of sperm and eggs so I pulled out some studies um, and on prenatal exposures and the effects on, on fetuses and newborns. So they've shown hyperactivity, impaired memory, behavioural changes, increases in behavioural problems, hyperactivity again, uh, gene expression in embryonic stem cells, um, again stem cells, asthma even. So it's not only about radio frequencies that um, is relevant to this. I'm just throwing this in about the magnetic exposures as well. Um, there was a study of five laptops that showed these huge exposures um, uh, that exceeded even the IC and RPA safety limits, which we know to be um, uh, you know, higher than we would like. Um, so a laptop is really not to be used on a lap. So even with the Wi-Fi that might be emitting from the screen, this is specifically about the magnetic radiation coming from the laptop itself. What is key to understanding all of this is that the environment influences the expression of the, of the DNA of the, of the cell, basically. Um, if the, the, it affects the cell membrane and in a very simple terms, that uh, it reduces nutrients in and toxins out, as well as the, the GCCs that were mentioned earlier. But um, uh, basically, the, the cell membrane has antenna that is reading the environment and then translating that into biological expression. We've seen increases in miscarriage associated with magnetic fields, um, 7.4. Uh, yeah, so there's a, a, a thing about um, reducing MRIs that you know they need to be they the limits don't protect the fetus basically and incubators uh, I thought that might be relevant to you um, have been shown to have high EMS that's electromagnetic fields which can interfere with the sympathetic nervous system and alter heart, heart rate variability and inhibit melatonin how are we doing on time Catherine we need to, to be whizzing on but earthing has been shown in a study to help uh, newborns in incubators and we need to be thinking about how to design incubators that they they can be um, uh, safer for the child in terms of electromagnetic radiation so these are some solutions here and i personally i don't understand why kangaroo care isn't more more used there is so much evidence there to show that that is a really lovely 
a effective way of looking after babies. So even the in the IEEE that uh, are the um, I think I've got it right, the Institute of Electronic Engineers. That's not quite right, but anyway, that they uh, they inform the standards that the FCC adopted in America, uh, even though have shown um, biological effects. And what they say here that um, the devices that the um, sorry the electromagnetic compatibility of the interference of the fields from one device with another. Um, human health can be indirectly affected by this electromagnetic interference with the function of medical devices, including hospital equipment and pacemakers. Um, so I thought that was relevant to, to the newborns and the incubators. I don't need to spend too much on the extent of the problem, but uh, you might be surprised by, thank you, Chris, um, for putting in the comments about the IEEE. I, I, I it never ceases to surprise me that more, you know, more and more of these things come out, um, like the wireless wireless headphones and the Fitbits. So there are lots of wearables now. Even um, even hearing aids can be wireless now. Not on the NHS in the UK, but privately you can get them. So um, some of these are radio frequencies the, that are Wi-Fi you know, emitting. Smartphones, obviously, cordless, cordless deck phone. I need to just touch on this um, because this is one of the worst offenders in your home, and I strongly advise a corded phone. Um, the, these are sending pulses from the base station of the of the cordless phone day and night for as long as they're plugged in, and they are incredibly powerful. Um, they they are a, a big emitter. Um, the closer you are to a Wi-Fi router, the, the, the basically distance is your friend, okay? Um, we're getting home assistance now um, more and more. It's a fun thing to be able to just speak to the air and get your music turned on. Um, modern cars, this is a surprising one to me that um, now that a lot of modern cars have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth actually in there and can be quite hard. Uh, certainly you can't turn them off in all, but in some you can on the dashboard, so you have to go into settings and, and disable again. So, um, uh, home appliances, I'm just going to touch on this, it's not the radio frequencies, but basically you would not want to be sleeping with your head the other side of a wall to the back of a fridge. That would be another uh, for the magnetic fields, induction hubs again, magnetic fields. With all these increases in exposures, we're seeing a, a rise in what is called electrosensitivity or electrohypersensitivity. So as midwives, I would just fling this out there because um, this is something just to be aware of. Um, that uh, this is people who, who are, we're, we're, our biology, everyone is affected in, in our biology by what's in the environment. Some people are, are literally feeling um, the effects. Some, there are, some people are so sensitive that they'll know if, um, if uh, someone has their mobile phone on. Some can even detect whether it is on flight mode that it's still actually switched on. Uh, we need to just bear this in mind because with um, 5G coming out and smart meters, sorry that wasn't in the other slide, but that's a, a massive offender in the home. Um, this is the digital utility meter versus the analog version. Um, that's functioning on wireless technology. Um, we are just going to carry on seeing uh, increases in in the in uh, electrosensitivity. So, in turn, I'm just going to come back to that slide. But uh, the bigger, you know, common things that parents wanting to do the best by their children now the baby's born. We've got wireless baby monitors and even uh, wireless well, <laughs> smart, in inverted commas, smart socks that you can put on your baby um, to monitor heart rate and everything. And it speaks to your by this gadget to your phone that you can have by your bedside so you don't have to get up in the night. Um, but 
let's just look. This is like putting a mobile phone mask near your child. So the digital baby monitor, one meter from the baby, is two, up to two volts per meter in exposure. Let's look at the mobile phone mask at 150, the same. And the deck cordless phone next to the head, up to 80, it's massive exposures, mobile phone. Um, and the Wi-Fi router, again, up to two, two volts per meter. This is sourced from PowerWatch. So you really need to be um, telling your ladies not to not to do wireless uh, baby monitors and, and these gadgets that can actually interfere with the heart rate. That makes no sense. Um, I'm just going to fling out there the synergistic effects and then I want to um, wrap, wrap up. Um, but the heavy metal toxicity, if you've you know, a child's got braces in a Wi-Fi environment, or if you've got um, mercury amalgams, it, this is uh, also relevant to the vaccine schedule. Um, if there is uh, heavy metals in, in the vaccines or um, so on, multiple chemical sensitivity, this uh, glyphosate plays a role here. Uh, EMFs have shown to increase um, moulds massively um, particularly I think aspergillus, which is the black one, and co-infections, these all have a synergistic effect with EMS. Um, looking ahead, what's around the corner, we are already in the UK piloting in Cumbria and Cornwall 5G, and it's being rolled out in America. This is millimetre wave technology, it's also being used in body scanners in, in uh, certain airports. Um, it has not had a single test for safety. So let's just briefly <laughs> touch on what you can do to minimise. Um, basically, thank you Catherine, reduce exposure, raise resilience, this is my motto, and um, distance is your friend. There are near fields, far fields, and you want to just keep the stuff as, well, away, as far away from you as possible and for a small uh, duration as possible and the most important environment to protect is your the sleeping environment when I say your I mean this is I want to be speaking for the baby as well it's not necessarily just night time um, simple ways to reduce your exposure I wish I had more time on this um, but I'm really happy to take this conversation on if you want to email me and I can I can do more on this because this is it's important that we we can take control of certain things. I mean, basically, if you can replace anything wireless with corded, that goes for your internet connection, for your, court, your, your phone, if you have a landline still, ethernet cabling computers, um, opting out of Wi-Fi. So I don't know in other parts of the world, but in the UK, BT and Virgin will have public Wi-Fi attached to your router as well as the one providing you in the home. So even if you cable your computer, this is, I made this mistake, you can still have the public Wi-Fi emitting so that people can be wandering past your still what, uh, your house, still watching the streaming, you know, the videos. Um, uh, so unless you opt out of that, your router will still be um, emitting Wi-Fi. Laptops are not for laps, create distance. Um, I want to mention bellyarmor.com, I think it is, that um, there are products that you can shield your uh, pregnant bellies with, blankets, and um, you can also get devices that shield underneath your laptop computer if you have it on, the, on a desk. Um, good question about the Doppler. Uh, I can't go into that now, um, but uh, I can't remember the lady who's done a lot of work on that now. My mind's gone blank. Um, Thanks, Chris. Okay. Um, and yeah, there's just a thing about self-care, basically, increasing your resilience to this, detoxifying your body so that it is more, more resilient. Um, if you go to ehtrust.com, have I got that right? I've got the website in the resources list. This um, it's about the most comprehensive t uh, tips list that I found um, on on how to reduce your exposures from the common the common things in your home. Um, so they are a fantastic resource. Uh, there are lot, lots of printables 
in all sorts of formats, postcards, posters that you could be taking into your practice and disseminating to women. Okay, so just to sum up, the existing guide to public safety, this is from the Buy Initiative Report 2012, which is a really uh, excellent resource to go to. Um, the, the guidelines are not protecting the embryo, fetus, neonate and very young child. They're not protecting us, but they're certainly not protecting them. Common sense measures to limit both extremely low frequency EMS and radio frequency EMS in this population is needed, especially with respect to incubators and education of the pregnant mother with respect to laptops mobile phones and other sources so um this is where you come in and i'm really sorry that i haven't managed to give you more time on the on the safety tips or for this conversation but I, if we've got five minutes we'd really like to open it up to a conversation about how can you take this forward my take on this is that um it's quite it can be quite a frightening uh, topic um the last thing you want to do is, is spread alarm um, fear can generate its own uh, own bad consequences, but we need to start to sow seeds and start to have conversations. Because believe me, the pa the people that who, who have vested interests in us continuing down this road, they are working twenty four seven, you know, day and night to um, bring out more and more things that we want to buy, buy, buy. And um, we, we already have children who don't know the difference between internet and Wi-Fi, the two are not synonymous. You can have internet without Wi-Fi through cables. Um, so I invite you to get curious, start observing, um, conduct your own research. And I would really love it if at the, birth, at, at the checking in appointment, when women first come to you, that along with guidance on don't smoke, don't drink, blah, 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 eat more of this and less of that, um, that we need to be disseminating free resources to women on this because this is how you're going to make the most difference for the next generation you're going to protect the child during pregnancy or at least try and then that will will start to educate the parent in terms of what they bring in while that child is free it's no mistake that bill gates and um uh, steve jobs did not allow their children to use ipads and iphones and so on um my website is uh, on is not not live at the moment, but this is how you can contact me, Rebecca at syntonicbirth.com, and I would really welcome taking forward this conversation. If anybody wants to help to implement changes in your um, in your in your work environment, then I'm here to help. Okay, thank you so much.